Hello and welcome to episode eight of Full Swain Thoughts, a fried egg podcast on the Netflix docuseries Full Swain. I'm Brendan Porath, joined by Andy Johnson and Joseph Lamagna. We have reached the conclusion of season one of Full Swain. Uh, episode eight is titled Everything Has Led to This. It is primarily on Rory McElroy, a late ad or a late I don't know, green flag to the producers of this show, apparently. He was not an original signee. They sure had a lot of footage of him before he gave them the green flag or the green light. Uh, So I think that was part of why he signed on. And then obviously developments over the course of the year in golf and with his place in golf, I guess, is why he joined. So this is the Rory episode. It is the primary scenes are the Open Championship, the Tour Championship, which are given equal measure, I would say, equal time, um, and a lot of Jupiter, Florida. Some you know, youth clinics and an odd sort of detour, superfluous detour to some VR center. But yeah, it's Jupiter, it's the Open, it's Tour Championship, and it's on Rory McIlroy. Um, guys, this is the last episode. It's it. It's the season finale. What did you make of this episode? Did it tell the good story? Good did it tell a good portrayal of Rory's year and I guess the sort of close of the PGA Tour season, I would say. Go ahead. Somebody jump. Andy, um, do you like the episode? I, I have mixed feelings about the episode. Okay. I, I really, really enjoyed some in, additional insight into the most interesting, I think, PGA Tour player there is, Rory McIlroy. And I think one of the things that I took away most from this is just how big of demands there are on the top player in golf. I could not believe like, you know, like, and I think they did it a nice way. Like, you know, one of the things that I am kind of like, I took away from that episode is I, I somewhat feel bad for Rory with how Everywhere he turns, somebody wants something from him and he's doing something. And obviously, I think he's compensated fairly for that. But I I wonder how life is where you're just going from one engagement to another engagement and there are just continual asks of your time, you you as a person, and at the same time, you need to play high-level golf. I think one of the things that was portrayed really well is that Rory is in a different class than every other player that was, that was showcased in this, in this whole season. And where the difference is, is what his commitment off the course is in comparison. And he is forced to play at as high of a level with this additional, you know, burden that he carries and how, you know, and I thought that was a super fascinating insight into the world's top player. The other big thing that I took away from this, and this is more of a season long uh, take, the best parts of this show as a whole, the the things that I will remember the most of this show are the casual situations where the top players in the world are together and they're just talking. And we saw that at Eastlake and we saw it with with Rory talking about becoming the elder statesman. I thought that that was awesome. And it was something that like, you know, he's 34. It really like had a lot of deeper meanings of golf. Like he's he's not that old and he's this elder statesman at the tour championship, which is like kind of like shows the changing of the PGA tour in front of our eyes like this. He's talking about Phil and Tiger five years ago and Phil and Tiger five years ago were in their mid 40s. And he's talking about how he hasn't played with anybody that he's he's old, uh, that he's younger than in a given in that week. So I thought there were some very uh, good aspects of this uh, episode. And those were the big takeaways for me on the positive side. Do you think, um, go ahead, Joseph, what what was your main, do you think this was a fair portrayal of Rory and his year uh, in golf? Uh, Do you think, and and secondly, (laughs) I don't think it was a fair portrayal portrayal of his year, but what do you mean? Well, I mean, we're just gonna skate by all the all the majors before the open. Feels like that was kind of the year of Rory McIlroy was how great how close he was in in 
four major he appears in some of them. He appears in the Masters, like with this. What about the PGA? And the, where he refused to talk to media that was because not. he was so disappointed and broken up about well, he his hadn't performance. signed on yet. Though, I too, know, right? I, I mean, I, yeah. I guess I get you're saying, yeah. Do you think it was an okay portrayal? I guess or a fair portrayal of Rory's year? And do you think like this show? And I don't know that we're giving it the glowing reviews. Do you think this show needed a Rory episode in order to succeed, or it could have been okay? with something else so go ahead joseph i so i i came away with it from it actually like some parts i didn't like which we'll get to incredibly positive on the yeah. rory mcelroy portrayal i it shows like especially back to him as a kid like he has more talent in his fingertips from the time he's three than like most guys will ever have in their whole body like he's rory's been that phenom and what i love so much about rory he's honest he says exactly what's on his mind and he stands behind it. And like the scene where he talks about Patrick Reed going to the Asian tour and dropping in the official world golf rankings that? and being How like, good? beautiful, yeah. Yeah. beautiful. He's willing to put that on camera because his actions speak for themselves. I think it's incredibly refreshing. And people, the casual fan got an insight into who Rory is as a human being and as a golfer. So I came away from it really liking the Rory McIlroy parts of this. I think he comes across incredibly well. And my criticisms of this episode and of the series as a whole aren't Rory McIlroy's fault. Yeah, I, I feel like, look, Rory gets praised by the media. I always talk about this a lot and the live bots get mad. But like there are those moments he's genuine. He stands behind what he's saying, whether it's a, a fuck up or it's, a, it's something that will paint him in a, a pretty well good light. And so like when he talks... I don't think it's like a company line or some brand talking point all the time. So I thought this crystallized a little bit for me. Why some guys go to live, why some guys don't, why some guys in a certain stratosphere can't or shouldn't. And Rory's in that stratosphere. I believe him when he's thinking about the larger profession. He uses the word profession because I think what people have done has affected the profession. And I've had to, st I want to step in and stop that. Like, if it was about Rory or Tiger, like, they will just take 400 or 500 million dollars and they would just do it. I do think they're thinking about larger things, about the future, about legacy. They, I think that's a real thing. It's not just a talking point for those guys. And when he really talked about being motivated by some guys hurting our profession, that registered with me. And he, it, it seems like he's really influenced by Tiger, obviously on the course growing up, but he's like, he, he uses the quote, he set a great example for us going forward, not just what he's done in the past. It's like, how do we take this on this current moment of strife? So I know that sounds like I'm fluffing Rory yet again, but it sort of crystallized for me the motivations of why he stepped in and felt like he had to, you know, take the weight of this sort of battle on because it's certainly him that's doing it it's not i wouldn't say some of the tour people come across super impressive in this but it's certainly rory and, and like you wonder where they would have been without rory who's who's doing that right is, is that fair am i being am i being sold a bill of goods am i being persuaded by something that you don't think i, I actually... thought well you want to talk about it like i thought one of the things uh that was really uh revealing was this conversation with uh andy Pazer. Uh, of the yep. tour when he was talking about him talking to players and it's like listen i'm doing this i'm committing to this of all the people like i should you know like and that i think is is one of the things that's so endearing about rory is that of all the people with like fighting live rory was making the most sacrifices you know he turned down the most money personally he is the one that had to give up a lot of freedom with how he sets his schedule. He plays worldwide. So like he has European tour considerations. He's the one that went out of his way and did a lot of things in order to create this new structure. And I don't know if it was necessarily like really explained great. And we could talk about that with the Delaware. Like, again, I think this goes to like the, you know, if they if there was a little bit more live conversation through the seven episodes, this episode would have worked even better. Um, but, you know, he that and again, like if I think about the high points of this series in the show um, and in this episode, it was like Trevino, Tiger, Rory and Jack. It was Rory sitting at the table with the tour official talking about, 
you know, like the sacrifices he's making. It's the locker room. It is these like kind of like very casual where the cameras have been. It probably have been around for a while and the guys guards are starting to go down and they're they're letting loose. Yeah, I thought that like the scene with Pastor now they know the cameras are there like Pastor does for sure. He's not going to start talking too much. Rory like was pretty keen. Like that's what you want from the show. That's what you wanted when you heard about this show happening in last year. It's like him having to say like Cantley. It sounds like Cantley was pretty pissed about hearing that they didn't expect this mandatory thing to come across it, 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 based on from Delaware to the announcement in Atlanta. There was some sort of mix up. And like, that's the kind of scene and detail you, you really want from a show like this. One, one thing I've thought about in the 2022 season that I'm, I'm curious if anyone just registered with anybody else, but the Friday night of the U S open when they were in Boston, Rory is right at the top of the leaderboard has a chance to win that night. He went to Celtics warriors and I don't know, this was never really became like a big story, but it was the NBA finals. And I'm, I'm incredibly like drawn to that story of Rory being in the crowd watching the NBA finals, like seeing the peak of competition and then going back to Boston to compete for his legacy. And when he says things like in this episode, like no other athletes get to pick their schedule. I think we've all just gotten a little bit soft. Soft. Like it's a really cool quote and thinking about Rory's year and like being at the NBA finals, watching it and being like, man, I deal with the most pampered people. (laughs) <laughs> for me, it does a lot. And I would love for Rory to be asked about like that, that dynamic of experiencing competition in other sports and then having to be the person who's driving all the change in his own sport. I mean, he, one of his high points of press conferences was the, was the NFL comparison that he made. Like it, it's clear, like that's, that's yeah. part of this whole decision, right? Where he was like, when I, I can't remember when I turn it into a Tampa Bay Buccaneers game, I expect to see Tom Brady. And I do like, that I thought that was a, uh, you know, that there's definitely ties to that. So I think that's a good point. And obviously, I think like, you know, that's one of the I, I wonder, like, what would the Rory episode have been if it, if he was if they covered him all year? I think there would have been a little bit more depth. I think there's a lot of depth in this. Maybe the lack of footage allowed them to go a little bit more into the Rory backstory, which worked really well. Maybe less footage helped. But it also did miss like some checkpoints throughout the the year with Rory that would have added some color, I think, with with Southern Hills, you know, which was obviously a huge part of this. The country club, they touched on Rory's, you know, the masters like where, you know, you want to talk about like, you know, they talked about Jordan Spieth, you know, quest for the career Grand Slam in episode one. Rory has his own quest for the career Grand Slam. That's a huge storyline in his career. They talked about the not the no majors for eight years thing, but really like, you know, that that masters like when I think about Rory McElroy's year, a couple things stand out. It's the live thing. It was uh, Sunday at the Masters. And then, you know, the the Open Championship and and then the the FedEx Cup. So like not having the Masters to me was was one thing that like. You know, I we saw Rory McElroy like less guarded than ever at that Masters talking about like how much he took away from a third, which felt like a, it was or a, a runner up, which was a very distant, distant runner up. And he really didn't have a chance to win on Sunday. Do you think they showed him in his position, like fighting for live as, as not carrying enough, carrying too much or just the right amount? Cause they, they, ha- they splice it in like F- Faldo, they splice in a quote. He's the custodian of the game. Um, you know, JT's like, he's not just been given this title. It's like some title of like, he's the voice of the PGA tour. Uh, he says that at East Lake, Tony Finau is like an open saying we're backing him up on this. Like, um, uh, he talks about like, I'm in this position is because of my golf. Um, and like, there's this, the, the anecdote about Arnie and Jack sending him a note when he won at Congo congressional being like, now you have to push the game forward. Do you feel like they're overdoing that? Like, or, or they undersold all that was on his plate this past year uh, uh, on the peripheral uh, outside of the course. I think they did it the right amount. And I think it's, it was honest. And I think it's exactly who Rory is and what he was dealing with this year, where I have a problem with it is that it didn't tell the other side fairly enough. And so I think that the honesty that Rory has 
is like what was lacking from the docu series as a whole. If the whole thing had been as authentic as Rory McIlroy, it would have done justice to Rory's story and the rest. So one major note I have is I think this is a completely unfair portrayal of Cam Smith. And it, it, it did not do his season any justice. It None. does mention that he's world number three, but that's it. It doesn't ever mention that he won the Players' Championship. It doesn't talk about him being one of the most dominant players on tour all year. It, it just talks about him being a spoiler at St. Andrews and then signing with Liv and being a little jerky. In well, the they didn't conference. even talk about signing with Liv. They, 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 it was a rumor. It. it was right, a rumor right. all it's, the it's way through the he, FedEx Cup, and then it just is over. And it's like, wait, did he sign? Like, I think about this as like a ca- a casual golf fan has to look up, did Cam Smith sign with Liv? The, the closest thing that came to it was Dylan being like, that warrants a response. Like, this is a new kind of frontier for Liv Getz, and it warrants a response. But I don't think it's clarified that he actually went. So it seems to and me... Guys, go ahead. He shot 30 on the back nine at St. Andrews in the Open Championship. One of the most impressive back nines. Definitely, I mean, that I, in, in, major champ, in recent major championship golf. And most imp- definitely the most important round of his career. That was none that was done no justice. And I think this was a very unfair portrayal of Cam Smith and that's where this starts to feel like PJ Tour propaganda to me and it didn't have to be that way because of how good Rory is and, and it would have shown the other side. Well, like they the the thing about it is they went into that voiceover, I think it was from the drop drop zone right after uh rory finishes at st andrews and it's talking about how rejected or something no how rory would have won you know this event all the and it's like wait no one of the best players in the world tracked him down and beat him flat out beat him this is one of the best players playing a great tournament in the in, in and then one of the other best players playing a better tournament and that's what the story of the open was and it wasn't told that way which was like extremely disappointing. Cam Smith, I agree with you, was done completely dirty. They they talked about him calling, you know, like one of the things I think with Rory, where where the miss was with him being a late ad was added interviews, like maybe, it, you know, two interview settings over the course of the year instead of just one, because it did feel like we got a lot more press conference interviews than we got with like the the one on one interviews. It seems like it was one day in South Florida, but given the the outfit he had on, maybe more than one. May, it was like a breakfast, like an interview of breakfast. Can I just say something real quick with Rory? Um, so on that day in South Florida this week at Phoenix, he was asked about it. Like, hey, you joined? I didn't think you were. He goes, I made sure that the parameters were very much like, look, you can film me. Dash, you're not coming to my house. You're not coming in my car. They're in his car in this episode. They show him driving. I thought that was amusing. Like he contradicts himself. He's in his car. Maybe that's from some other like golf pass video. But anyways, like very not, not a big deal. But I thought that was amusing. He said this week in Phoenix, I told him they couldn't come in my car, but like in this episode, anyways. Um, all right. What else? Do I, I agree with you on the Cam Smith stuff. I had a note. I was like, there's a quick live montage on DJ Poulter and Brooks. Like we're going. And then like it transitions to like the limbo of Cam and they do his question at the open press conference and that's it. And he was one of the two or three players of the year, if not the player of the year. And it felt like it was just sort of, um, I don't know, limited, just was not discussed. Let's just, for somebody that might not be a diehard, let's go over Cam Smith's year. Out duels. John Rahm at Kapalua to start the year. Number one, defa- at that time, best player in the world. In a, in a one-on-one duel, just outplays him. Flat out outplays him. Wins the players in dramatic fashion. Go, hits a shot on the most iconic PGA Tour hole in golf. Hits it right at the flag. Makes birdie. Ices the players' championship. The biggest PGA Tour event. Then, fast forward to the Open. Tracks down. Rory McIlroy shooting a 30 on the back nine to win and then signs and goes with Liv. And, and like, there's no mention after of the Liv. tour champion. What? It should have been yeah. a bigger deal at the tour championship. Now that you'd say that, yeah. right. They were playing together. They should have talked more about cam at the tour champ. Cause he did not go straight to live. Right. He yeah. just, he was the last men's major that went, but he played through the tour championship and they're there. 
So I would have loved to hear up. some commentary with the players. How do you feel like this guy is clearly going? How do you feel that he's here? Like this is again the huge miss of the whole season is that there isn't this live through line and the we never get any players commenting about how they feel about live that are either PGA tour loyalists, people on the fence, whatever it is, because then all of a sudden it would have opened up the storyline of, you know, that was a huge part of the tour championship and the entire FedEx cup playoffs was what, what if cam Smith wins the FedEx cup playoffs? And that's a huge miss with, in terms of like, you're telling the story of Rory who's doing all this stuff to fight off live. And then he goes out and wins the tour championship and cam Smith, was a like a big part of that story was like, God, can you imagine if Cam Smith is the the open champion holder? He wins the FedEx Cup, he wins the players, and then he goes to live. How big of a disaster that is. And he didn't win that last one, you know, and Rory won it. Like that was a big story. I think where this really starts to feel like PGA Tour propaganda to me, like they had their hands in this, is not mentioning that he won the players championship, which is the biggest the, the PGA Tours crown jewel and it would have been so much more effective if they went back to quotes from earlier in this series where they're like the player I, think, I don't know if it's Justin Thomas or who says it but they're like the players championship that's our championship like this is the pinnacle of the PGA Tour and then cut to Cam Smith hoisting the trophy like Cam Smith deserved that spotlight it, it this this episode did him dirty and it would have been way more effective to to paint an accurate portrayal this season how can you not how can you not show him winning the players championship the players is really in the entire season i mean it's just like filler well, footage of like getting us to from you know story why do you think it was marginalized uh-huh. what well, exactly if cam it smith if, here's the if the if cam smith doesn't go to live how do you think this series is different it's it's a lot more open uh, the open resolution, uh, not just on Rory's point of view and more players for sure. There's a big play, like the weather at the players. That was a great championship, right? I mean, that was a fun, crazy championship. The golf is hard storyline. That would have been a great one, right? Especially if Cam Smith's in it. So if you were um, Cam Smith and you watched this series, you watched this episode, how, how would you feel? I mean, you'd feel like you were given short shrift based on, I mean, you're just like this, you're, you're this supporting actor in a stretch where you are a, a winner. The main, I think it's worse than that because yeah. they make him look like a jerk in his press conference too. And they don't show like any of his success from the season. I, well, I would, feel, I would agree that off. he was kind of a, a soft in that press conference. Me too. I don't know if he was a jerk, like, but he was soft, like answer it or don't like, just don't be offended that you were asked. Um, yeah, I, I, but I guess I'm playing devil's advocate. They would argue like this is the Rory episode. We're telling the story of Rory. It's not the Cam Smith episode. Now, I think well, we were talking the, about the, the open, episode. The episode was about Liv and Rory, and the the Open Championship, which is heavily fe- uh, featured in this, became a PGA Tour versus Liv showdown in the final round with cam smith and rory everybody they hit on everybody's talking about cam smith going to live they hit on that but like that's what it became and it was a back and forth the rest of the year with cam smith and rory really with the fedex cup playoffs you know the back and forth showdown i have every day is what do i put on when i'm going out of the house is it zero (laughs) restriction or be dratty it really is that's all i got it's those two options joseph (laughs) I'm getting this segue down. Don't throw me that facetious like look of of disgust or incredulity. Um, it really is though. No, no bullshit. I mean, that's all I own. It's all zero restriction vests, pullovers, outerwear, rain gear, or be dratty layers. I have one on now. It's the crew neck sweater. They've got. I would recommend the hoodies. They're getting into the hoodie game. Everybody's getting in the hoodie game. But I like their material. I like that they're not um, too bulky. Right, they're not, you know, husky boys. I, I love their Willie hoodie. That's like a thinner hoodie for a warmer temps. The Proctor hoodie is for colder temps. Um, and, and then a ton of quarter zips, polos. Andy, you got this tried and true. What is that? The Liam I got, polo. I got this. The classic Liam. This is the polo that kind of made Bedratty famous. It's the it's the Peruvian Pima cotton. It's got the uh, pocket uh, on it. It is a iconic. Uh, polo like the nice thing about these polos is you can wear them in a, a variety of settings and you never have to worry about these going out of style because they are they are just your classic 
comfortable uh, cotton polo that feels like you're wearing a t-shirt all day. It's like you Great sometimes spring. forget you got a you got a collar on, right? When you're wearing these because it's so comfortable. Great spring, great fall, great great every it's a great polo to just to have in your in your wardrobe because it's versatile. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. You know, uh, it, it really fits any setting and it's really comfortable. So you can mix and match. I mean, you go to zero restriction.com. I have so much of their stuff. Uh, I'm wearing their joggers right now. This is the, the, the joys of podcasting where you can only see me from the waist up. I'm in a sweater and joggers, but uh, yeah, they've got a ton of vests. Obviously is, is one of their more popular things in the quarter zips and pullovers for, uh, I don't know, for me, it's like sidelines of youth sports. It could be for golfing. It could be for whatever it is. Uh, running out for errands. They're adaptable that way. You can go to zerorestriction.com. You can go to bdraddy.com. Use the promo code TFE25 on either site for 25% off at checkout. They've been, um, you know, our fr- friends of the program. Like we see them throughout the year and we are very, very excited. Some sponsors, not name names. You know, we love all our kids. We might run the other way if we have to walk the golf course. With Draddy, these are, these are you know, friends of the program since the beginning. Good people, been supporters supporters of ours and enabled us to do a lot of the work we want to do including this podcast so use the promo code tfe25 uh at bdraddy.com and zero restriction.com all right back to this uh episode eight everything has led to this uh i thought sean foley real quick let's just do some odds and ends i thought foley was a great voice narrating rory's development um from like i heard about this kid when he was 13 he went from a Ford or Ferrari. He was this chubby kid, but like he was like he had the engine underneath, and then all of a sudden he was just cut. Uh, I thought Foley did a good job of narrating his development. I thought they did a good job of really. It seems like for real, Tiger and Rory have become closer than ever in the last year to eighteen months, and I think sometimes we overplay that. Like I looked up the reason I got into golf is Tiger, but. Right now, that relationship seems very close. So I don't think they could have overplayed that. Um, what else do you guys have here? Any other dislikes or likes? Odds um, and ends? On, the, on the Tiger Rory uh, relationship, I thought maybe one of the coolest parts of the whole season was Rory sitting uh, after winning and talking about how Tiger's always the first one, always the first to text. So cool. Like so cool. So like cool. like he's the like he's he sends it before that last putt drops and and you know that was a great that, nugget that's what you want from the show that kind of exactly. little detail it's it's that it's you know that the what the show thrived where it thrived was the small nuggets of information from the behind the scenes cameras right where I think it failed was the overarching storytelling and sequencing of the episodes, which is obviously vitally important. It's worth watching because of the nuggets and it's entertaining because of the nuggets. Good point. Like there's good stuff in here. And I'm like, you know, I think season two, you, you obviously want season one to be the best season it can be. And it was, it was hand wrapped like these big storylines, but like that Rory nugget is what is one of the reasons that I will keep watching these shows as long as they go yeah picking up on it um i thought a quote that was illustrative of rory and his game and certainly this drought was applied to the tour championship i think once you take the weight of expectations off your shoulders you start to play freely and he was talking about his triple bogey he's like well shit i'm nine shots behind now because of this oh by the way that the staggered start was explained without <laughs> yes! any repudiation following it was just like, that's, you can't suggest like the players think it's a joke. The media thinks it's a joke and they like make a serious attempt to explain it and don't like talk about how it is controversial even like that was kind of PGA ridiculous Tour propaganda right there. So I loved Roy's quote about playing freely. Once the expectations are off your shoulders, right coming right off the open where he played well, might've, did not choke, but got conservative, not conservative, just stuck to his game plan when maybe he had to get off his game plan coming down the back nine. I think that also gives you a little bit larger lens into the the mental gymnastics that Rory has been dealing with, with major championships is that, you know, he talks about how he's accomplished everything that other than winning majors. And here he just basically lays out the direct quote about when he plays his best golf is when the expectations are low. 
And when, you know, like he doesn't care about the Canadian Open, does not care. You know, it, he knows that it has no impact on his legacy. He does care. It seems like he cares about the FedEx Cup. You know, I think he does. I think winning a FedEx Cup is right alongside winning a major because you have to play well the entire year. I would contrast that then with what Justin Thomas has caught whispering in Scotty Scheffler's ear at the end of the episode. It's like, he's like, he whispers him, you're number one in the world. That's just as much yours as anyone's. Like, well, like if you hold the FedEx Cup, like if it's not representative of what you think you're number one in the world and you deserve half of it, then maybe there's an issue with the FedEx Cup. I don't know. Rory does say, I think winning the FEC is right alongside winning a major. Um, so go ahead. again, like another great part of this episode, you kind of glean a little bit into the psychology of Rory with that quote about the expectations in the in the tour championship. He then goes nuts. And, I, and, and to a certain degree, I almost feel like being nine shots back wasn't covered enough after one hole, 71 yeah. holes, he made up nine shots. On the number one right. player in the world is almost gleaned over similarly to Cam Smith shooting 30 on the back nine at St. Andrews. And they did heavy play by play. Like there was Just, a lot of play by play in this episode. And I think it was because of the late edition of, of Rory. They had to lean on a lot of other assets here, you know? Right. So Joseph, like this. That's true. That's true. Joseph, what did you think of the tour championship coverage overall? Um, starting basically with the start of the week where I, I I knew Rory came right after Jay Monahan, but it's almost like he appeared on the dais with him as like, here's the sort of C-suite or here are the tour leadership. It's, it, it really is. So what did you make of, of the tour championship coverage really from the start? And then obviously the blow by blow, like Andy just talked about. My main takeaway, him saying that a FedEx Cup, winning the FedEx Cup is right alongside a major championship is genuine to Rory. And I wish it were genuine. I wish that's how fans felt about it too. It should be right alongside a major championship. But when the point system is flawed and we know that based where you are on the standings is based on like, it's really helpful to play in some weak fields. It's really helpful to play a lot. That diminishes the major champ. That, that diminishes its position alongside a major championship. So if I were speaking to Rory, like, look, I get it. I get why you feel that way. I wish I did too, but the fans don't feel that way. And I think that should have that side of it maybe should have been told a little bit more. Um, Otherwise, I thought it was interesting to see him follow up Monahan's press conference, and I didn't realize he was in the room like as Monahan was giving that, and then went up. I thought that was really cool. So look, Rory comes across so well in this. He's he's an honest character, and that I think he's shown in that regard. But I just am turned off by some of the propaganda e elements of this. Of this they series. add into it. Uh, all right. Any other big takeaways? Can we hit notes? Quick rapid fire notes. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll jump in. Like Andy, you alluded to it already. One of the most um, like genuine laughs I got out of this was just Trevino. Um, he goes, "Let me go wave to all my drunk friends," and he waves at the RNA clubhouse over there. Like they're wondering, like, what does he have some buddies here? And he's just going to all the old buddy buddies who you know are having cocktails. He's like all my drunk friends. When he mocks Jack's short game, oh, short ship, I like I rewound that like fifteen times just to watch Rory and Tiger like burst out laughing if he points like because Jack just like got taken for a ride on it right jack <laughs> set him up and fell for it and trino points right at him and then like tiger wheels around dies rory's dying that was so good i rewound it 10 times just watch them trevino just a, a like a obviously you know sui generis one of one uh any other notes you guys got go ahead uh one of my uh most amusing points of the show was when uh when michael collins was explaining to rick ross the golf swing loved it just like <laughs> spectacular just like a, a, a like a just a wonderful little nugget that i had no expectation of coming but just enjoyed um one quick note uh the producers or the show had the majors out of order because they think the pga came before the open championship in 2014 so they go through Rory's won four majors. They go Congo, oh Kiowa, Valhalla, Liverpool. And they probably thought that the arrangement, they're doing it very clearly in chronological. And so they, this is their, when they're doing the retrospective, 
they have his last major being Royal Liverpool. So that was just a quick note. I picked up things have changed since 2014, and now the order is not the order what it was then. Um, could it could explain some of the uh, shortcomings? Yeah, I thought it was interesting to hear Faraday on broadcast. Still, this has been for a few episodes now. Like, I just feel like he's been gone longer that I forgot he was like calling the open for NBC. Uh, what'd you make of the massage? The way he goes, "Fuck you, Phil." Very. I don't think that was laced with like antipathy. It was like half. You know, he does. He's not a big fan of Phil, but I think he knows that it's just kind of joshing on the range with guys or something. I found it humorous. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious that he said, I hope that makes it in the documentary. And the other guy was like, oh, that's for (laughs) sure going in the documentary. Like, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, it's in. It's in. Yeah. So that was good. Um, Is he tighter with Rom and Morikawa than we thought? But specifically Rom. I I don't, I'm not saying they were uh, enemies at all, but I, it seems like they're always together. Rory and Ron, but in this docu series, at least, no, yes, who knows? They're together at, at multiple locker rooms. I so. think it that's seems just like they're the nature like they're of tight. being being laid in the leaderboards. They yeah, obviously true. also play uh, Ryder Cups together. Um, one note I have here is like the Delaware thing. Um, I felt like it was a little light there. Um, and it, you know, like it, it kind of just like breezed through it and they're making these huge changes and, and we got the, the conversation with Rory, um, you know, talking about it a little bit. That was like the only thing that I gleaned. I thought for like the casual fan, you know, I don't think it really good, did it like a, a good job And this goes back to like them not really talking about live in a, uh, in a candid or open fashion, the entire series, but like. These were major changes to the PGA Tour, and it wasn't really explained very much. Yeah. Like, the show's about the PGA Tour and the season, and the season saw, like, basically the entire structure of the tour was was turned upside down that week. And, like, the whole ideology of the tour, the existence of the tour, the way that the power structure of the tour was was being formatted the shows about the PGA tour and it wasn't really like covered in a and that's like really what Rory like one of the things I took away from Rory like obviously was like how how heavily heavy-handed and involved he was in this thing and that goes to like the failure to actually build the storyline in the previous 7 episodes yeah, probably in an unfair way, maybe that, that he yeah. was, had to be so heavy, heavily involved, right? And, and where would they be without him? Um, so, uh, other thoughts on the episode? Did, was this one? You, we've kind of been down, I would say, but jumping from Finau, uh, Fitz, and DJ. I don't think you said did a lot for you, Joseph. Um, feels like we haven't approved of an episode overall since Damon. Where did this one land for you? You don't have to give it a grade, but did it work for you? Understand our current, our standing live objection that lives in cam were minimized. Where, did this work for you overall, Joseph? I would say that this one worked for me because of how good Rory was. I think that stands on its own. Yeah. Where I'm disappointed with the series is that I don't think it, I think golf is such a beautiful sport and the drama like stands up in an authentic way and you don't have to, when you don't portray it accurately, I think it diminishes from it. So Rory showing the clips of him as a kid and like how that kind of ties with tiger being on TV as a kid. And then Rory carrying the torch for the PGA tour and, and tiger texting him when he wins the FedEx cup championship. Like it, it all, it all has, you don't need to tell the story of the PGA tour in a dishonest way. And I think the live part of this was told in a dishonest way. So that's where I'm disappointed episode I thought was good. I am recommending this series to friends. Like I think people should watch it because there are great nuggets. Just don't think the storytelling was great as Andy has said. So I'll say this episode worked for me. I'll give it a B plus. It would have been an A or an A plus. I think if they told it more authentically and Rory was excellent. Um, but I just think the Cam Smith part and not telling Liv appropriately is just kind of a stain on the, the docuseries as a whole. Andy, uh, was this a kind of a little bit of a comeback episode or, or no? Not yeah, really. I think this is a B. Uh, I don't think it was one, the one of the best episodes of the series, but it's in the top half. Um, 
I think Rory, I, I, this is obviously going to be the most popular episode. I think episode one and episode eight are going to be the most watched. This will probably be one of, the, if not the most, or one of the most listened to of this show. Um, you know, I would I would urge others to look into the middle of the and Seven. go back to yeah. Um, but the this um this this was a good episode. It and it's because Rory is is such an authentic human being and interview and um and but it did have s- serious flawed shortcomings and it's the same shortcomings that really f- that carried throughout the show from episode one through episode eight yeah just a note of clarity there like episode seven if you did just jump to what we thought of this rory episode episode seven on mito and sahith we kind of take an extended detour talking about the failure of this series to talk about live so if you just jumped into episode eight and you want to hear more and we're kind of alluding to that discussion in episode seven that's there uh, pretty much right away uh, in the middle of episode seven uh of this podcast uh it worked for me i think like it, it's crazy how little time they had with Rory. They're like this, this sort of tour championship basically was when it all officially, he gave the green light apparently. Um, and it's still, they were still able to get enough. It made me wish he, his voice had been in it a little more at earlier points when, you know, maybe they were taking victory laps and, you know, the Riviera or the players uh, all the way through, not necessarily Rory himself, but just it, that he was available. Uh, but it worked. He did so much, even with just a late sign on and, I think it's kind of the, I don't know, the rapport or the standing that he's built up already that we don't think he's a BS or, and he seems to be pretty candid about, about why he's doing things and what the responsibility he feels. And it doesn't feel like it's, it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Can I, can I throw out a question slash comment? Yeah. If you had Rory sign on, um, really you didn't need Rory sign on, but if you had done a, a real telling of the live storyline throughout how good would Rory's answer to was live underestimated Ben, given his comments about like, you know, it's dead in the water effectively at Riviera. Right. And I think he expresses some that. And I think he expresses some regret at the top of this series, at the top of this episode about getting like into the personal nature of it and like the barbs flying back and forth. So yeah, I think you could have had a little bit more on his evolution of his, positions both at heated moments and sort of like you said down the water feeling a little bit more at ease moments right it would have been a cool evolution of, of how he had to lead from the beginning through the end through the tour championship so would you like uh, to see another episode on rory mcelroy in a future season sure yeah. i mean he's the most compelling figure in the game outside of tiger but tiger's you know half in half out Yes, there's always more. Like I just said, they did so much with like a day, a day at the tour championship and like a day in Jupiter. So would you? Oh, yeah. Andy? I mean, yeah. I, that's where I feel like if you wanted to make a criticism on this episode uh, with the live thing is this was the once in once ever episode where you could have gone really heavy on Rory. And obviously you want to do the background, explain who Rory is. But the Rory Live thing could have been even more, you know. I think we need another golf pass clinic. We need another uh, another golf pass clinic and the visit to the, the VR. VR? Then, so, yeah. well, one note um, I have, and uh, not to over romanticize Rory, but <laughs> the now on the tee, Rory McIlroy is legitimately my favorite sound in golf. And I, I was thinking about this, like if I we're going to be executed. And instead of a last meal, I got a last sound. Oh, come on. I honestly think it is one of the coolest sounds in golf. I look, I'm going to look forward to that every year now for the rest of Rory's career. It is such a cool sound bite that I, I don't know if it takes people to that place of like a July morning when, when yeah. they, when the yeah. open championship is starting. But I actually think that's like one of the coolest sounds in golf. And it was cool that it was in the episode. In this episode, it precedes a double cross OB. When they announce them like that, but no, I, I, I don't know. You're talking about the open championship too, but it, it is, it is a cool, you always get amped up even like yesterday in Phoenix, as we're recording this real time in, in February, like he's back on the tour and it's like a, he's become he's reached that level of like, it's a thing just to hear him and see him hear his name. So I'm excited for casual fans to see Rory in this episode and understand the superstardom that that is something I'm really excited for. That's a good point. 
All right. Any other All thoughts? Right. We're, we should note. Uh, I think we're going to do a wrap up, like a more holistic wrap up on what we thought worked, didn't work, and then really look forward to what we'd like to see, who we'd like to see in any seasons, specifically the immediate season two upcoming. So I think we will add one more, at least one more episode to this feed where we talk about some overarching takeaways of the entire season and then what we'd like to see coming up. Sound good? Yeah. Thank All you, right. everybody, for, for joining us on this ride. And, and we'll probably take a couple days to uh, digest everything before we do the uh, wrap up one, but excited to talk about the show holistically, you know, uh, rather than in these episode anecdotes. I think there's a lot there to chew. All right. Thank you guys for support of full swing thoughts on the fried egg. Uh, we'll be back with the, with another episode in, in the coming days. 